Kia ora and welcome to Choose to Lead Capability Group. I'm Annie Kennedy and it's my great pleasure to welcome Carol Lehman, the CEO and co-founder of Exonify with uh, Christine Tutsell and uh, based in Waterloo in Canada. So welcome. Uh, what are the things that would be great for you to explain to those that perhaps don't understand much yet about Exonify? How would you describe Exonify? So Exonify is a corporate learning platform that delivers a three to five minute a day brain science based and gamified learning experience that is highly adaptive to each individual. And we do particularly well where the audience or the learners involved are frontline employees. So those that don't sit at a desk every day and really have a small amount of time but are running around and need knowledge and information uh, consistently. So um, we developed this platform that delivers that three to five minute experience and it's highly impactful to the individual and also the organization. And I was, I was just saying to you earlier that I spent time with one of our clients at, at Capability Group. We've been in partnership with, with Exonify for about seven years now and have the license in the APAC region. And uh, it's important to us that we align to an organisation that shares our values and that's something that you really clearly do. And it was fantastic seeing this organisation in retail yesterday that has really uh, been, I think, really adapted to Exonify and benefits hugely and seeing that sense of connectivity and accessibility, but also through last year, the ability for the communication and people feeling connected and cared for through a platform like that at the same time, for me, was kind of an interesting thing to see. Um, and I'm curious to know what your, uh, first of all, I should say about Waterloo, because there's quite a few people in New Zealand that haven't heard of Waterloo. What can you tell them? Well, Waterloo is often um, called Silicon Valley North, so it's Canada's equivalent to uh, Silicon Valley where technology is obviously a huge thing. Well, it's a huge thing here also. Um, we have three strong educational institutions here in town that uh, graduate lots of software engineers and so it really was the start of a strong technology community and today there are literally hundreds of early stage to later stage technology businesses here in town that make it just a great place to start and build a technology company. It sounds like a pretty exciting space to be in. In terms of your own journey, so you, prior to Exonify, you uh, were CEO and uh, was were you founder or you uh, of PostRank? So I actually invested in a yeah. four-year computer science student. And so I was an angel investor in the company. And, uh, and then three months after I invested, he invited me to come and run the company. So I was a shareholder and also uh, the CEO. And it sold in 2011, was that, to Google? Yeah, yeah. And what was the pathway for you before that? How did you get to where you are? And how did it become tech has become the passion that you're in? So interestingly, when I was 17 years old, which is many years ago, a friend of my mother's asked me what I wanted to do for um, a living. And way back then, because that was decades ago, uh, I don't know why, but I said to her, I'm going to run companies someday. And she looked at me with a quizzical look because it was just not the case that a, a woman 35 years ago would say they were going to run businesses, especially a teenager. And I don't know why, but um, I just knew that that was going to ultimately be my path. Well, it started with I became a chartered accountant. So I have a finance background and was working at a public company uh, after I did my stint in accounting. And I ended up being part of a team that just bought and sold and raised capital for acquisition targets that we had. We bought a company. And I ultimately became the CEO of that technology company. So that was more than 20 years ago now. And that led to me um, running, then selling, and running another one and selling a whole series of technology companies. And Exonify, I will say, is the closest thing to my own baby. Uh, while I did personally buy the business, 
uh, 10 years ago from the original founders, they really had one customer, what I call some very sketchy source code that was not uh, scalable or really saleable to other companies, but they had a great idea. So I essentially bought that from them. Uh, Christine and I, my business partner, did that together. And then we uh, turned it into a real thing. So Exonify really is my own business um, and it's been almost 10 years uh, and really was born out of an evolution of running a variety of tech businesses over the last 20 years. And and you, you were sort of mentioned to me earlier that it, you find it such a gratifying space to be in. Why, why do you find it to be such a gratifying thing? Well, now having done a whole bunch of different technology businesses, um, you know, just in comparison to previous businesses, this one has a very uh, specific and measurable impact on both the learner and the organization itself. And it's so gratifying to get the feedback that we get about the impact that we're having every single day across literally millions of learners now in more than 160 countries. So, um, you know, we're not just selling software for the sake of selling software. We are having a very uh, significant impact on people's lives, what they're learning, what they remember, how they're performing on the job, and then what that gets the organization from the point of view of a business outcome. So the feedback we get is so phenomenal and um, really does warm my heart mm -hmm. and makes me feel like we're doing something important, not just selling software. And as we know, meaning and purpose is so important, right? And and I get a sense in your organisation that that clarity is absolutely there. There's a real authenticity there and there's a real sense of team that you kind of get a feel for. And uh, and I know that you have been in the top 10 best places to work in Canada at least a couple of years. What's the secret? What's the secret source for Exonify around best place to work? Well, it, it really does speak to culture and culture is such a, a loaded word because everybody says, well, we have a great culture. We want a great culture. At the end of the day, from my perspective, it starts with just how people feel coming to work every single day. And it's my job and it's the job of the leadership team to create a place where they feel awesome every day coming to work. And what that means is they don't feel afraid. They don't feel like they can't ask a question. They feel like they know everything they need to know in order to do their jobs well. And that the organization is there to support them. And that feeling started for me back very early in my career when I worked for a place that did not make you feel that way. And every day was walking on eggshells and wondering what was going on and starting the conversation in your head and everybody else's heads about what really was happening. And that fear and lack of knowledge leaves everybody in a very unstable place. So I learned early on to never do that to people and to treat them with humanity. I just, and I say this to new employees when we onboard them all the time, I'm just a human being like everybody else. I have a job happens to be a different job than everybody else but everybody's got a role to play that is a gear in a series of gears that if they're not all working together something will grind to a halt and I have a family I have children I have a mortgage to pay I have bills to pay I have uh you know lots of I have a life I have interests outside of work and I appreciate that everybody else does too. So when I come to work, I want it to be fun, invigorating, lots of laughter, a place where I get to spend time with so many great people and do some meaningful things too. And so it's that feeling that I've always wanted to create at work. And I think we've been very successful creating at work, but it, it goes well beyond me, it goes to everybody in the leadership team and that cascades down through the business. And that consistency, that mindset is really the central part of how you create and maintain culture. It starts from the top 
And then you just have to keep doing those things. But it starts with that mindset. It's not about posters on the wall. It's not about ping pong tables in the staff room. It's about that consistent cascade and absolute belief in everything we say and do that, how that sort of ripple effect. Yeah. And, and I'm curious because you said 35 years ago when you were a teenager and you went, I know I'm going to be leading businesses in some way. And you said what an unusual thing back then that was for a, you know, a woman, a young woman to be saying. And, and I'm also curious, the courage to be, the, to be someone who's going in what has been, I guess, quite a male-dominated kind of sector for a long time, to say, I'm going to lead with heart. You know, I'm going to lead with humanity and kindness and niceness and genuinely wanting to deliver that. And, you know, I'm just, have you seen a shift in the sector? Have there been challenges that you've needed to overcome and has that changed? It has changed. And like all these kinds of conversations change, it, it takes time. It's slow. And I do recall a conversation 15 years ago with a uh, local tech leader, a male local tech leader, who said to me, why are you the only person in Waterloo region that is female in a senior position in a tech company? 15 years ago, I was the only one. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say 15 years later, I am not the only one. There are lots of them and not just as CEOs, but also in various positions of leadership within tech companies. And I said to him 15 years ago, quite honestly, it, it will happen. And it takes one person like me being an example and then somebody else having the courage to step up and say, well, I can too, why not me? And it's that mantra, not why me, but why not me, that I learned many years ago that uh, gave me the confidence to try and give it my all and recognize that I'm as smart as the next guy. And I worked with a lot of people who aren't that smart. <laughs> So why not me? And I don't have to be a genius. I don't have to have all the answers. I can just be me and be honest about what I know and what I don't know and bring good judgment to bear. And that will stand its stead against anybody, man or woman. And so I have articulated that sentiment many times over the last 15 years. And I'm happy to say that it, it has happened that mm. certainly it's not a 50, 50 balance by a long shot, but it will get there. And it's just simply a matter of time. I get a sense listening to you from quite an early age, you had a sense of self, you knew who you were and there's a groundedness in that, you know, like I feel like you had a clarity around what you wanted to, where you were going, but a sense of who you were, that sort of grounded you around whatever those challenges and being willing to be first. And there must be moments, and particularly the risks that you've taken as you've taken on businesses. Have you, has, has the fear of failure there? Are you superhuman or is there still the fear of, of failure? Do you doubt yourself? Do you, do you have those moments? I, I, uh, continually second guess myself. And there have been moments of sheer terror, I can tell you, um, through my career. But the very first one being um, the very first company that I ran technology company um, happened, because my boss got fired, and he was the CEO. And we had just raised a whole bunch of capital from investors for that business. And they fired him. And then they looked over at me and said, can you run this company? And in that moment, I was under, I felt like a very hot light bulb. And mm -hmm. I looked at them and I said, yes. Now I can tell you inside, I thought my head was going to explode. I was so scared, but there was something that caused me to say, Yes. And then I just set about figuring out everything I needed to figure out to do that job well. And so 
uh, you know, there have been many points through my career where key decisions need to be made. And everybody is looking at me to Mm -hmm. make those decisions. And I, I'm always trying to take in as much input and information as I can to make the best decision for the whole, but I can, and I've made good ones and I've made bad ones. But at the end of the day, I've learned that, um, you, nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets in their own head. I call it the circus in my head quite often. I have a circus in my head constantly asking myself, well, should I have done that? Should we have done this instead? And all I can say is at my core, I have enough confidence to know that no matter what path I choose, what decision I make, it always works out. And when I look back at all of the moments in my career where I was faced with what felt like life-changing decision and you don't know how you're going to get through it and if it's going to work out. Now, sitting where I am today, I look over my shoulder at all of those times and quite frankly, I barely remember them. Mm. And you always get through it. No matter what, human beings are so resilient And as long as you have the best of intentions and you exercise good judgment and you consider the whole, you will always end up in a good place, whether it was a good decision or not. And as I say, I have made some pretty dumb decisions over the years unintentionally, but it always ends up working out. You can course correct and nothing, nothing causes you to fail in the Mm. end. Um, so I've just learned over the years and, and how it just started with taking a step forward and saying yes, and looking at it as, and, and I will say when I said yes to those investors, yes, I can run this business within a month of being in the CEO's chair, I knew, ah, this is what I was supposed to do. Nice. It just came to be. And that set the stage for everything that came after. And that's where I get, I get the sense of such a balance with you. You know, you talked about I'm a mom, I've got all this other, you know, like I'm a normal person, right? But I've got all of this other stuff going on and this, you know, this huge company that's doing exciting things. And there's a sort of almost a zenness about you. And then I'm like, how are you doing this? But you're just in your space. You're in your flow, aren't you? You're, you're, you're in your groove. And it's just almost sounds like it's just this effortless strength space kind of, I, this, is, this is where I should be. Yeah. And have you had your support? Have you had people you go to? Is, has that been something that in those moments that you've gone, oh, this is one of those moments I'm, there's a big decision. Do you have a support network that you use? Most definitely. Um, you know, I would say that people ask me often, do you have a mentor? The answer to that is no, I don't have a mentor, but I do use my network often to mm-hmm. say, how, how have you dealt with this situation? Have you ever encountered this before? Um, you know, just to commiserate over things that have happened in, in our various businesses. So a lot of those people are other CEOs mm-hmm. um, and, and I use them when I need to, as I need to, um, you know, in the moment, sometimes just regular get togethers. Um, and, you know, it, it is comforting to know other people mm. have experienced the same thing. And, and you are a mentor to others too, aren't you? You're, you're supporting those that you talk about. You've seen a shift and there's more women in, in Waterloo, for example. Is that part of your role? Is there an element of giving back? Apart from being someone they can see like me, is there an element of giving back in that context too? Yes, I I am well known in the community for uh, anybody can contact me, anybody, and say, I need an hour of your time to chat about my business and what I'm doing. And I will always give people at least an hour of my time. And I just look at it as giving back. And many of them are women now, young women who have great ideas and just don't know how to get started 
or don't know how to raise capital, uh, don't know what decision path they should go down. And, you know, it's invigorating for me because I keep abreast of all of the things going on, which is Mm. super interesting to me. And I know that if I can help a, a young entrepreneur avoid two critical mistakes that are going to um, diminish their ability to accelerate the business. If I can just get those barriers gone for them quickly so they can move on to the next thing, I am always happy to do that. Nice. I think the last question I have for you, Carol, is uh, our campaign, we, we call this Choose to Lead, aligned to the International Women's Day coming up. What does Choose to Lead mean for you? Uh, choose to lead the the thing that strikes me about that phrase is um, it is a choice to lead and people often don't give that choice enough deep thought before they make that choice you know leadership is one of those things that everybody aspires to I shouldn't say everybody, most people aspire to. They get a sense of self-worth out of thinking that leading people or leading an area of the business is the thing that's going to make them successful. Leadership is, is a choice and it has nothing to do with your title or how many people that report to you. Leadership and choosing to be a leader is so much more than that. And it goes to your own values and behavior. And so making that choice means you need to think deeply about who you are and how you comport yourself and the value that you bring to the role that you're playing, whether you're leading people or not leading people. It is a choice that needs consideration regardless of which type of leadership you may uh, choose to go down. So that, that's what comes to me when I think of that, um, that phrase. It is a choice and uh, it's a great choice if you choose to do it. Um, it isn't just about leading people and having a title though. It is choosing a path that uh, you need to actually put thought and effort into. And I love seeing when people get that concept, when there's a mindset shift and they understand it is a choice regardless of where they sit in an organisation, for example, and how energising that can be. Um, Thank you so much, Carol. It's been a huge pleasure listening to you, sharing your story, your perspectives on leadership. Um, Very, very much enjoyed that. And uh, thank you and wish you well. And have a good evening over in Chile, Canada at the moment. And thank you everyone for tuning in. This is Choose to Lead. I'm Annie Kennedy of Capability Group. Matewa. Thank you. Did we? <laughs> thank you so much. That was so great.